have good news for you. Good health and fitness just became easy. Now I promise that a month from now you will feel better than you do today. There are many ways to get yourself in shape, but walking will give you the most bang for your buck. In this video we will cover why the sedentary lifestyle is dangerous, what you can do to improve your health and fitness, benefits of walking, basic gear, getting out the door, keeping a journal or a walking log, and the 10 minute time test for good health. Now picture this, you've just stepped into your home. A healthy glow lights up your face as you just walked for 30 minutes straight. The scent of the crisp, fresh morning air follows you into your living room. You feel invigorated and more alive than you have in years. Who knew that walking can have such a powerful impact on your life? Now walking is gentle on the body, soothing to the mind. Walking allows you to experience the physical sensation of movement and the mind expanding feeling that comes through physical activity. My website, Walking for Health and Fitness, has more great walking information to assist you on your walking journey. The links are in the description below, so check it out. Why the sedentary lifestyle is dangerous. By definition, the sedentary lifestyle is characterized by spending a majority of your time sitting or lying down with little or no exercise. Some experts consider this as dangerous as smoking. We sit when we eat breakfast. We sit when we commute to work. We sit for lunch. We sit for the evening commute. We sit at work. We sit for dinner. We sit for a television or leisure time. And then at the end of the day, we stop and lie down for another six to eight hours. What you can do to improve your health and fitness. Now walking is by far the easiest and most effective way to take care of your health. A daily 30 minute walk will improve your cardiovascular health, reduce excess body fat, strengthen bones and enhance muscle performance. Now picture this, the doctor he glances at your medical chart, he looks up at you, then quickly back to the chart. How can this be? I don't know what you're doing, but the results are amazing. Let's cut your blood pressure medication in half and retest you in six months. Now, How would you like those results? For people who may be predisposed to certain health conditions, walking can reduce the risk of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, osteoporosis, back issues, Alzheimer's disease, and other dementias. Walking is also an antidote for being overweight and obese. These conditions are known to increase blood pressure and high blood pressure is the leading cause of strokes. Excess body weight also increases your chance of developing other problems linked to strokes, including high cholesterol, high blood sugar, and heart disease. The benefits of walking. So why am I so enthusiastic about walking? Well, I'll give you three reasons. It's free, it's easy to do, and it's easy on your body's muscles, joints, and bones. And there's no question that walking is good for you. Walking is an aerobic exercise which stimulates and strengthens the heart and lungs, thereby improving the body's utilization of oxygen. It also lowers the risk of blood clots as the calf acts as a venous pump, contracting and pumping blood from the feet and legs back to the heart, reducing the load on the heart. Now, walking prevents heart disease. Exercise also increases your lungs' ability to take in oxygen lowers blood pressure, helps to reduce body fat and improve blood sugar and cholesterol levels. Walking prevents cancer. Exercise has a number of biological effects on the body, some of which have been proposed to explain associations with specific cancers including lowering the level of hormones such as insulin and estrogen and certain factors that have been associated with cancer development and progression. Walking prevents obesity. Walking helps prevent obesity and decrease the harmful effects of obesity, particularly the development of insulin resistance. That's the failure of the body cells to respond to insulin. By reducing inflammation and improving immune system function. Now, walking stops the loss of bone mass. Walking can stop the loss of bone mass for those with osteoporosis. Walking helps lighten the mood. Walking releases natural pain-killing endorphins into the body. That's one of the emotional benefits of exercise. Walking leads to weight loss. A quick 30 minute walk burns 200 calories. Over time, calories burned can lead to pounds dropped. Walking strengthens muscles. Walking tones your legs and abdominal muscles and even your arm muscles if you pump them as you're walking. Walking improves your sleep. 
A study from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle found that women aged 50 to 75 who took one hour morning walks were more likely to relieve insomnia than women who didn't walk. Walking supports your joints. The majority of joint cartilage has no direct blood supply. It gets its nutrients from the synovial or joint fluid that circulates as we move. If you don't walk, joints are deprived of life-giving fluid which can speed deterioration. Walking improves your breath. When you walk, breathing rate increases, increasing oxygen to travel faster through the bloodstream, helping to eliminate waste products and improve your energy level and the ability to heal. Walking slows the mental decline. A study of 6,000 women ages 65 and older performed by researchers at the University of California in San Francisco found that age-related memory decline was lower in those who walked more and walking lowers Alzheimer's risk. A study from the University of Virginia Healthcare System in Charlottesville found that men between the ages of 71 and 93 who walked more than a quarter of a mile per day had half the incidence of dementia and Alzheimer's disease compared to those who walked less. Okay, walking helps you do more longer. Aerobic walking and resistance exercise programs may reduce the incidence of disability in the daily activities of people who are older than 65 and have symptomatic osteoarthritis. Walking leads to a longer life. Research out of the University of Michigan Medical School and the Veterans Administration at Ann Arbor Healthcare System says those who exercise regularly in their 50s and 60s are 65% less likely to die over the next eight years than their non-walking counterparts. The number shoots up to 45% like, less likely than those who have underlying health conditions. Walking is an investment in yourself. Doctor's visits, prescriptions, lost time at work, and the lessened quality of life due to preventable illness all add up to a significant sum of time and money. As you go through this, program and this video. Look at your time and effort as an investment in yourself. Let me repeat that. As you go through this program, look at, this, at your time as an investment in yourself. What could be better than that? Your health, happiness, and life depend on it. So basic walking gear. Walking requires little more than good footwear, that's walking shoes or sneakers, some comfortable clothes, socks, and well, that's it. Footwear. Now, to get started quickly, you just need a comfortable pair of sneakers. With that said, going forward as your walking increases, an investment in walking shoes will enhance the walking experience. Now just to be clear, you don't need any spe special type of shoe to start out. Just wear a pair of sneakers that are comfortable. The main point is to just get you out and walking. As you get more into walking, getting a good pair of shoes, a walking shoe specifically, is really a good investment. So let's take a look at walking and running and the body mechanics involved with each, and you'll see why. Now as you walk, your body weight is distributed more evenly on the foot than when you run. When walking, your weight rolls from the heel through the ball and continues to the toe in one foot in front of the other. This gentler rocking chair-like motion requires your feet to absorb the shock of only like one to two percent or one to two times your body weight with each step. And during the walk, there are points where both of your feet are firmly on the ground, dividing the, the weight evenly. With each walking step, the outer heel absorbs most of the impact before distributing the weight through the foot in the um, in S motion through the push-off of the toes. In contrast, running requires the support of at least two to three times your body weight, and each stride has moments with neither feet on the ground. Runners spend a good deal of their time in the air, like literally you're in the air when you're running properly and fast. So what goes up must come down. It is this constant landing that pounds and puts a tremendous amount of stress on the body and over time it causes it to break down. So that's what happens when you're running. It's what happened in my case. That's why I'm walking now. So what's it mean to your shoes? Well, specifically, it's the old axiom of having the right tool for the job. Walking shoes are designed with the specific body mechanics and strike path of walking in mind when they build them. So they are constructed to be more flexible through the ball of the feet to allow a greater range of motion through the roll to the forefoot. They also have greater arch support to protect where the force is heavier on the foot. 
Running shoes, in contrast, have more cushioning in the heel and the point of impact and less protection through the ball of the feet. The amount of heat generated in running motion is greater, so running shoes are made with a higher amount of mesh to keep the feet cool during the exercise. Now, Picking the proper shoe can prevent discomfort, injury, and will encourage you to maintain an active lifestyle. It is most important that your shoes feel comfortable so you do not avoid exercising. In my book, Walking for Health and Fitness, there is a complete section on how to buy your walking shoes. Socks. Now, a good pair of socks will absorb sweat and prevent friction between your feet and the inside of your shoe. Now, test out several pairs. You want thick, but not too thick. Synthetic materials like polyester, acrylic, and nylon are the best bet because they help wick away moisture and prevent blisters. Now make sure they don't bunch up around the toes or gather at the heel, which can cause blisters and hot spots. Clothing. Now many walkers just wear regular clothes. Um, this works just fine. Comfortable, non-restrictive clothing works the best. Don't overthink the clothing part. Just be comfortable. Dress for the weather. This is your major concern when dressing for walking. Be com being comfortable will keep you walking. Okay, now dressing for warm weather. Wear a light, loose top. Uh, shorts or short tights. Synthetic clothing. It helps moisture escape and evaporate to make you more comfortable. And a hat, sunglasses, and sunscreen. Dressing for cool weather. Uh, for your upper body, dress in layers. Okay, now three layers work better on the upper part of your body. Each layer acts as an insulator and traps body heat. Now I wear a thin synthetic layer, followed by a heavier long sleeve shirt, and then an outer layer, which is usually a windbreaker type of jacket or a lined jacket if, it, if it's really cold outside. Uh, see my video, which will be up over here, on how to dress in layers. Okay, your bottoms when you dry, when you're out walking, uh, one layer is generally all you needed, and I usually wear some kind of sweatpant type of bottom. Accessories, a hat, gloves or mittens. Uh, mittens keep your hands warmer than gloves because your fingers are together. A scarf or some other type of garment to keep the wind off your neck. I use a bandana as my scarf and also um, it traps the heat inside your, your layers. Sunglasses on a bright day and days when, it is, uh, when there is snow on the ground to prevent the uh, re reflection from bothering your eyes. And any type of reflective gear is good to wear any time of day. The more visible you are when you are walking, the safer you will be. Uh, see my video on uh, safety walking tips. Now, the dressing rule of thumb. This is important. Dress as if it is 10 degrees warmer than the outside temperature. Your body will warm up as you walk and you don't want to overheat. So if the temperature looks, if it's 30 degrees when you're outside, just consider that it's 40 degrees Dress for 40 and your body generated heat will make up that 10 degree difference. Okay, so when you're walking, some carry-alls. Uh, keep a fanny pack on you with a water bottle. Water is always important to take on a walk. Long walk, short walk, keep water with you. Fanny pack makes it so easy to do that. Now they're comfortable, they allow your arms and hands to, sw and hands to swing freely. Water, like I said, is always important. Of course, your car keys, phone, always carry a phone on you. Keep emergency contact numbers in your phone. Uh, money, identification, and emergency contact information, as I said. Reflective gear, reflective gear and a good flashlight headlamp are a must when you're walking in the dark. If it's a rainy day outside, also carry a, wear a reflective vest, better to be seen, okay? Uh, getting out the door. Now, many athletes, even professionals, say that the hardest part of training is just getting out the door and starting their workout. Being organized is beneficial to any fitness routine. The less you have to think about, the more you can focus on the workout ahead. Walking is an easy sport to prepare for, and having a checklist will save you time and effort as you prepare to walk. Over time, getting out the door will be automatic, but a reminder of what you need to bring along is always important. So in the description below, I have a link that'll take you to my website, which has a, a walking checklist, a get out the door checklist. This way you can you know, download it, print it, check it off, have all your supplies ready, you're ready to go. Here's the biggest mistake most athletes make, and that's stretching cold muscles before the activity. Okay, so you don't wanna stretch right away. So you've all prepared, you're out the door, don't stretch. 
What I suggest you do is a warm up. And a warm up is just some basic movements that take your body uh, through to just get the blood flow to the muscles nice and easy. And doing a warm up before you walk usually takes less than five minutes. In my book, Walking for Health and Fitness, I have an effective and really efficient warm up routine before you start walking. Now you're on to the walk. You can walk almost anywhere. Okay, the important thing is that you get out there and you walk. Now some suggestions, walk through your neighborhood. Okay, you know the terrain, you probably know some people along the way, and by walking you will get to know a lot more people. I've met so many new friends just by walking the same route over the past few years. It's really simple. Anyone I see, I wave. Car drives by, I wave. I figure with the cars it's good karma just to acknowledge that I see them, they see me, they usually give me a little bit of a wider path when, uh, when I'm walking. So keep that in mind. You can also walk in your local park, which is great and safe. And there's many people in the park usually. And go to your high school track. Okay, this is a great option. The surface is flat. You can walk up the bleachers to get a better workout in uh, walking up the steps. Okay, so at this point, again, see my video on walking safely on the road, which is really important. The cool down. Now your muscles have been used because you just finished your walk. You feel great. Okay, time to slow your heart rate down a little bit. Go through the same movements that you did in the warm up. Okay, then comes the stretching. You want to stretch after your muscles are warmed up. Uh, my book, Walking for Health and Fitness, has a great stretching routine, and uh, there's a supplement that comes with the pro with the book that uh, really has great images and pictures and a good routine of how to stretch. Um, at some point, I'll put up a YouTube video on stretching after you walk. All right, congratulations, you did it. You did your walk. You got out the door. You warmed up. You did your walk. You enjoyed the scenery. You said hello to people. You waved to cars. Beautiful. You got back. You cooled down. You did your stretching. Congratulations. Uh, celebrate this. Now, going forward in your walking routine as you go forward, the 10 minute time test, I have not seen this in any other video anywhere, but this is important. Walking speed is a powerful indicator of your vitality. Walking speed studies show that an older person's pace, along with their age and gender, can predict their life expectancy just as well as a complex battery of other health indicators, such as blood pressure, body mass index, chronic conditions, and smoking history. So, Knowing how fast you can walk is so important to give you an idea of, of, of your current health condition. How to do a 10 minute time test. So um, you've been walking, you have your routes that you like to go on. Find a spot, a place where you can walk pretty much uninterrupted. Set your stopwatch. Most smartphones have a stopwatch on it or just look at the time, okay? And walk your normal pace for 10 minutes. Stop it at the 10 minute mark. Look where you are on your route. Okay, that's how far you can walk in 10 minutes. Record how far you walked. Okay, this will be your baseline number. And then every two weeks th during your walk, set that whole 10 minute time test again. Go to the same spot, set it for 10 minutes, see how far you walk. Now here's why it's so important. By tracking your walking speed, okay, you'll be aware of hidden health problems if you suddenly start to slow down. So, you might be feeling great, but you're slower. What's going on with that? There could be some underlying problem. Now, it could be that you're just tired for one day. Hey, over one day or two days, it's fine. But if it continues to be a pattern of several days, you might want to have a doctor look at you just to make sure that there's no underlying issues there. Okay, the quicker you get your problem resolved, the less time consuming and expensive the medical treatment will be. And one other last thing you can do is uh, keeping track of your progress. Uh, recording your walks in a journal, a fitness log, a spreadsheet, or by using any apps, uh, Apple has their health app on the phone, or a great free download is a company called Strava, S-T-R-A-V-A. Uh, it's a great way to keep you motivated uh, put, and to keep you putting one foot in front of the other. And it's fun to track your progress. Strava tracks your uh, route on a map so you see where you are, where you've gone. And um, 
It tracks your pace, it tracks how long you've walked, the time-wise. It, it's a terrific app, it's free. I recommend using it. Use the running setting with Strava. It just gives you more information. Doesn't matter if you walk or run. Um, now, I've used physical roadmaps to keep me motivated. I've, keep, I've kept track of my progress uh, in my logs, but then I've transferred it to physical maps. I'm a school teacher. I put them up in my classroom. My students get a kick out of it. I Photoshop myself in various places and tell them I really walk there. Um, in the description below, I have a link to my website and my whole story on my virtual run, or which started as a run and then became a walk around the United States. It's a pretty cool thing. It took me 16 years to complete it. And, uh, you know, it's just having a goal, so important to keep you motivated. Um, I have videos up here about um, the mindset of walking, you know, what's your why. So check that out, okay? <sighs> so we've gone through a lot in this video. Please, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Walking for Health and Fitness YouTube channel. I have sem so many more videos on health, fitness, the walking process, the mindset process. I have mindset videos of just music and quotes just to keep you walking and motivated. Um, go to my website, read my story about why I started walking. Um, and one of the benefits of walking was to help back issues and that got me into the whole walking thing. So check that out. I thank you for watching this. This is Frank. Walk on.